Hey, hey. Uh, this time I'm going to do the video here in the studio. A um, couple of technical reasons for that. The 3D printer, as you know, is, is on the messy bench and it's printing a seat right now. Uh, we're going to use a whole bunch of printing to get this truck finished up. As far as interior parts and stuff like that, there's uh, all of those parts in our trucks are typically made out of plastic anyway. So I might as well use 3D printed stuff that I can design or my daughter's actually doing a whole bunch of 3D design now. So she's designing the seats, uh, dashboard, stuff like that, um, which is really cool. And then we print it here at the office and there we go. Uh, at the end of uh, video number six, you guys remember that we had the, the, the crossbars on, we had the front bar on, uh, we were doing a couple different kinds of welding, electric and brass at the same time, bronze I guess. And uh, so there was more tube coming. I've started on the 1 8 tube. Uh, basically the, the thing that I wanted to get done on the roof was this simple X frame on top. Uh, I really wanted to get something really, really simple. It's, uh, I will say this, this uh, X, just filling in the tube work here on top, has made the cage so ridiculously strong, it doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't make any sense, okay? So, so strong that when I, I just simply took the 1 8 straight rod that I'm using, it's a solid steel carbon rod, it's a, there's no coating or contamination or on, on it at all, so it welds really nice. This rod, um, I cut the length here, and then I cut the other length here, and what I did was where they intersected, I actually dremeled. Um, kind of like you um, are notching two fence posts together or making a log cabin or something, you know what I mean? So this one here, I notched the bottom. This one here, I notched the top. And then the two of them actually go together. So the two pieces actually sit flat on each other. You know what I mean? Because it's half a one, half, half a moon here and half a moon there, and then they go together. So that's how I did that because I wanted it to stay flat. Um, but the cool thing was when I when I got these in, I cut these to the length uh, a little bit long, and then I kind of ground in the angles so it would fit right in the corner. <clears throat> and in doing so, I could kind of pop them in. I kind of had them all popped in, kind of to stay there. They kind of stayed there on their own before they were welded. You know what I mean? They were tight. And just putting that brace structure in there, uh, I could really feel it right away. The cage was so ridiculously strong; it didn't make any sense. Um, I remember doing this as well. I did the same sort of cage cross bracing on the black uh, two-door Jeep that I built, a kind of a roofless Jeep off-road build. It was a brute, um, all black. Uh, I'll put a link in the comments in the YouTube video description box uh, for the Scale Builder Guild thread. I think there is one for that Jeep, I'm pretty sure. Um, I did a little tiny cage work like this on the, on that Jeep as well, and that thing, wow, it's been so it's been so used and so beaten and so much like, oh, let's hold my beer, try this, you know, it's been that that's the kind of Jeep that it is, and the cage work is just like really strong on it. It doesn't make sense. It's really small tube, small uh, material, but it's so strong. So anyway, this is bomb proof now, crazy, just crazy strong. Uh, so, the reason I say all that over and over again is because, don't be discouraged, if you get your tube work started and it still feels like it's kind of floppy and flimsy, don't get discouraged because when you get it all done, you will see a huge improvement in the strength. That's all I got to say. So basically, uh, in the last video, we had these two uh, down rails on here. Uh, we had the, the back crossbar, the top front crossbar, and then what I've done is I've added the 3 16 tube here in the sides. And then I added the 1 8 sized uh, small X in the middle. That's all I need up here. This thing is incredibly strong. I will probably put some little uh, hand hoops here, um, some grab handles and stuff, some little de small details, but those will probably be, uh, I'll probably actually just use silver solder on them or something because they really aren't going to have any pressure on them or, you know, I'm not, there's nothing going to, nobody's going to pull on them or bend them or whatever. So they're just for looks. Now, 
No changes in the back. It's the same way that you've seen it before. I did do some work in the front. Uh, I wanted to get the winch on at this point because um, the the winch is big. Uh, the winch is big. The winch is good. It's amazing. Uh, this is an SSD aux winch. It's amazing. I will say that. But the winch is also huge. And so uh, what I wanted to do is get it mounted. And what I did with that is I put a extra cross member in the front here. You can see the cross member in the rail right there. Uh, this cross member uh, already has two holes in it. You can see the ones in the back too for the shock tower, same thing. Um, I just drilled out these two holes. And then in the bottom of the winch plate, the factory winch plate is uh, like a flat thing that goes underneath. The winch screws into the plate from the bottom. And so I just tapped two matching holes that would fit these and put screws in it. And so the winch plate, act, the screws actually go through the cross member, which is frame, frame mounted, and then they go into the winch plate. Okay. So that's how I did that. Uh, pretty simple. Now, what I wanted to do was try to keep the front end uh, clean. As you'll see, the approach angle is really nice in the front. Um, try to show off this cage work in the front. It's so simple, but uh, it's not really cage work really. So this kind of line here seems to continue down. You can kind of see how the tube work sort of matches up. Um, I will say that even though that looks absolutely amazing, it was completely accidental. I did not mean for that to happen at all, okay? All I really wanted to do was to get some kind of a, a tree bar, you know what I mean? Some kind of a roll bar that would, you know, hit something in the front and it would roll it onto the wheel or past the fender. That's really all I was trying to achieve here. So, and it just happens to turn out completely accidentally that this line coming down the fender matches so nicely with this down tube in the front. And that's, um, you know, I'm not going to take any artistic credit for that. Anybody that knows me knows that I have the artistic ability of an earthworm. Okay, so, like, that's not my forte at all. And the fact that that turned out kind of that cool is totally accidental. But anyway, it looks great. Now, uh, so the winch is in. Uh, what I did is I took these two crosser tubes. You remember how these used to come together here? And I just had the, the two tubes uh, from the one perimeter bar. They, they met here in the middle. So what I did is I simply just notched that out so that the winch would sit right in between the tubes like it's nice and, it's nice and snug in there. Not tight, but snug. Um, and there's no spare gap, so that looks kind of cool there. And uh, this will protect the front end. Um, I'll get my bumper points for that. It's all frame mounted, of course. That's important. And should I ever decide to change the truck to class one, this is also as wide as the windshield post uh, here at the bumper. So with the tire change, I'm still class one legal. Now, <clears throat> with all that said, I do want to spend a couple minutes talking about where I'm going next. Um, there's some, uh, as you know, one of the main things that's taking over the RC scale world is 3D printing. Um, Here's a perfect example right here. Let me see if I can get this out of the scale garage without knocking it over. So we are building um, Broncos. Uh, we're building Viterra Broncos that have, uh, and C-Max Broncos. Um, I kind of gave that away, but we're doing C-Max Broncos pretty soon too, so wait till they come out. But uh, we're doing, Bron we love Fords, we love Broncos, we love Jeeps, Chevys, whatever they are. But anyway, this is 3D printed. This is the Coyote motor that Exclusive RC puts out. Uh, it's got a, it fits over your 540 can. He's got a nice motor, motor holder black plug that fits in so you can put it on your stand. Uh, there's exits on the oil pan for your wires to come out should you need that. Anyways, all I'm saying is this is amazing. With a little bit of weathering, this motor and tubes and stuff, this motor would be like literally as authentically scale as you would ever want in your tiny truck. So. Amazing and 3D printed. That's crazy. <clears throat> you guys have probably already seen the GCM videos about our own uh, Shapeways motors that we do. Um, for instance, there's one right over here sitting in the 49 Chevy. Um, that 3D printed motor is from the GCM Shapeway store and of course they're pretty easy to detail up as well. But, um, and we will have a 3D printed motor in this so that's you know, I'm bringing that up just because we're going to start on accessories and where they're going to go and, and I need to know that stuff for the tube work. Partly because I'm going to put tons of lights on this, okay? 
I've already uh, bought a bunch of stuff from Hey OK Performance. If you don't know what Hey OK Performance is, um, here's a link in the description box on YouTube so that you can check out uh, Hey OK Performance. Uh, they have a full listing of parts on RC Crawler. And um, the electronics and the lighting systems and the light controllers and the winch controllers and all that stuff that they, they make as electronics. Um, so good. We've been using Hey OK stuff for, um, I think since Hey OK even started making stuff for sale. So I uh, love, love, love their stuff. Everything from a simple back to a full-blown blinking light controller, stoplights, everything. It's like they, have, they have it all. So uh, here's another one right here. I mean, this is a Hey OK 4-amp relay controller that runs um, your battery power, which in my case is 3-cell, directly to the winch. It bypasses the power from the receiver, but still makes use of your third channel for your winch control. Great, great product from Hey OK. Um, we're going to make specific light buckets and stuff for this off-road. In the back here, we're going to put the uh, typical blinking off-road lights uh, with the stop lights and stuff in it. So there's going to be the typical off-road blinking lights in the back. Um, we're going to use the original headlight sockets on this truck. Um, the factory uh, RC four-wheel drive Yoda grill and all that stuff will go on there, the grill ring. And that will have uh, typical warm white, you know, low voltage glow lights in it, typical stuff. Still, you know, it'll be receiver voltage, I'm imagining. But then uh, I wanted a light bar on top, so I 3D printed this light bar. Um, this is, uh, this has 18 5 millimeter LEDs in it. And they're all connected by six at a time by circuit boards in the back. So I've got three power wires to hook up and then I will feed the power out of one end or the other, whichever it happens to be. So it will come down my type, my tube here. And then I 3D printed this little back wall. Um, I'll try to fit that in so you get an idea of how that'll look. The back wall actually will click in. So it's lights on this side and full coverage on the back. Okay. And I can't click that in because I'll never get it out again. It's a one time deal. Oops, there we go. So this actually has a little step on it. So when I push this in and click it in, it'll seal this right over and then I'll never get it out again. <laughs> but anyways, the point is, why am I doing this right now? I kind of have to because I want to finish up the tube work and to finish up the tube work means I need mounts, okay? That's the whole reason why I'm going all around in this circle here. So this light bar is gonna sit right here. Um, and that looks amazing. It's uh, not intrusive on the interior at all. It's got uh, more light than you could possibly imagine. Um, these are stupid bright, okay? I've used these on the twin hammers. This is the same lighting setup that I used on the, on the twin hammers uh, roof, buggy roof. These uh, five millimeter all the way across. These are crazy, crazy awesome lighting. Uh, so that's gonna be crazy bright. <clears throat> now, obviously I need I need little mounts on this. Like I'm going to use those little scalar fab fab tabs again, those little tiny mounting tabs. These ones right here. I'm going to use these again. But how do I get this in the right place on here and then the mounting tabs in the right place? Here's a trick. Okay? So what I've got is my light bar. And what I did is I took a couple of extra links and I stuck them together with screws and set screws. I just took a couple of links. I think these are ascender bits. And I spaced them out to fit over the light bar. Okay? So, you see what I mean there? I just took regular generic junk links, screwed them together, spaced them apart so that the fab tab was on the edge where I think it should be. Okay? Doesn't have to be precise at all. Don't worry about the precision. Just do this so that they stay at the right width. That's what matters, okay? There's a cool little tip trick right there. And then what you can do is take this, which is all metal, and doesn't matter if you heat it up. You can take this, which is all metal, <clears throat> and then you can put this in your chassis or frame or roof rack or whatever it is, like that, 
okay you can put that in clamp it in and then weld the tabs on ah you see that trick ah uh -huh. because this is all metal now up top and so when I'm heating it up and welding those tabs in I know that they're gonna be the right whoa I know they're gonna be the right width apart so when I'm done my light bar will still fit in there but um, I'm not going to burn up my light bar trying to mount, you know, weld it or tack it on or something while it's got plastic in there. There's a tip. I'm also doing the same thing with these other lights, okay? So I'm going to use these little, these are little um, spotlights. They're, um, I think they're 50 50s. They're um, little square with the lens on them and everything they're they're these are stupid bright these are so bright that after you if you happen to glance at them while they're on you get this black spot in your eye and you can't see for five minutes that's these so yeah I mean I need it I need a truck that I can use for night runs this is the one now I've also got a little fab tab on here and that I'm going to weld on to here onto the front of the cage work Okay, one on each side of the winch. So that's the reason why I'm spending all this time on accessories right now because I have to get this stuff done so I can get the mounts done on the cage so the cage can can get done. Um, you kind of have to think a couple of stages ahead when you're doing fab so you get all the fab done at the same time and that's where I'm at. Now, interior. I think I don't need any other mounts, I don't think, in the interior. And the reason I'm not going to do any more tube or mounts in the interior uh, is that there's so many frame holes in here already that I can put drop brackets here and actually bolt the interior in from there. So I don't think I need to add any more metal work onto that if for the sake of the interior. I'm pretty much done there. Um, pretty excited now because I'm going to finish up this tube work for the lighting. Um, the body is, uh, the cage work is at a, at a spot where it's actually starting to look like a truck. Um, it's looking like it could be trail worthy at some point. Uh, the only other thing that I have to weld on is the tabs for the, for the uh, ring magnets to hold the body down. That's the only thing I have left to do. Uh, I'm going to do the lighting and then I'm going to do these and then I'm done. So. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.